Okay, so thank you, Mr. Chairman. These next two are text amendments to uh, the City Land Development Regulations, uh, LDR. The first one is amendments to Chapter 328. Um, that's the tree and landscape chapter. Um, we went over these in pretty good detail at the work session. Um, staff had tried to condense these down to just the changes to make the pack a little bit smaller. The issue we ran into is that on each and every page of this chapter, there's at least one little change. Um, most of the amendments within this chapter are very minor. Um, if you look at the cover page at the beginning of the packet, um, there's a sort of a bullet outline of the more significant changes. Um, we went through those at the work session, but just to touch on these briefly, um, starting on page nine, um, this is the exemption section talks about industrial zoning um, and also what we're pointing to do there is add specimen trees back into the mix not as a requirement but as an encouragement that they be considered in all of this on page 15 there's a relaxation of uh, the standard here where you actually get more credit for preserving a specimen tree where we're lowering the caliper inch um, from 48 to 234 um, to give a little more credit a little earlier process for a landscape plan. On pages 17 and 18, we're proposing to reduce the requirement for shrubs um, that go in street yards around developments. On um, page 21, and it talks about periodic inspections. And on uh, page 23, uh, we're proposing to add a three-tier system <coughs> under enforcement and penalties, where the penalty goes up for each repeated event. So, Beyond that, most of it has to do with some housekeeping things. Um, the city arborist is here to answer some of the more technical questions. Um, but until recently, the arbor division uh, was part of community development that has now shifted to a different department, namely the engineering department of the city. So some of the changes in here have to reflect that change. Um, also, some cleaning up of some zoning districts that were deleted uh, a couple of years ago, actually three years ago, from Title II we forgot to get into this chapter. Um, beyond that, I think they're fairly self-explanatory, but I'll be glad to answer any additional questions you may have. The last staff is recommending approval of these amendments as presented. Any questions for staff? What's your question? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, Mr. Um, just a few, actually, comment and observation. Several of the pages, I think the, uh, intention was to replace the word director by city arborist slash engineering department and that has not been consistent throughout. So for example on page 3, section 328-6A, we need the city arborist needs to be added there. Same thing on page 11. Okay, on 328-6A. 328-6A. All right, our, we're changing director to City Harbors for Engineering Department designated mm -hmm. in the I second and third line. Our copy I have. There was a copy from the work session, mm -hmm. which had some errors in it because it was, oh, it was based on an outdated version. The email PDF version from back last week has all of the new changes. I do have some extra copies with me. That's, that's here. We went back through it with some additional pairs of eyeballs and we found a few more little changes that were overlooked on the first pass. But that was really one of the observations to make sure that that is consistent for us. So if it's been already and, and so you know, commissioners, too, the term director is a defined term in the LDR, in fact, the definitions chapter. Um, most of the things in the LDR stem from the Community Development Department, and the Community Development Director is simply abbreviated as Director. So if we do not need that particular department head, we've got to change it. Because the Harvest Division is now an Engineering Department, we had to abandon the term Director and clarify it a little bit better. So if you go to page 11, 11 of the page, it's just simultaneously the Slash engineering. Maybe that wasn't 
approval of section D, 328.14, which was the exemptions. It was page, it's page nine. And then on the summary, it seems to say that the reason for that was to remove the section so that all trees are accounted for on the site. It just occurs to me that that, you know, when we're, when a lot of us in the business community are trying to reduce <coughs> levels of review, levels of red tape, when we're trying to develop something, this only creates another level of review, another level of red tape, other than an engineer looking at a site plan or whatever. Uh, am I wrong about that? It's, there's a couple extra things in there. Well, the, the site plan, regardless, will have to be reviewed by the city arbors or uh, by site plan. He means that a landscape plan is required. Currently, the proposed building footprint of the new development is not required to have specific trees identified because it's in the footprint area. And so that area gets ignored. We look at the surrounding site. And the concern is that within the footprint area that's proposed, maybe some specimen trees that really do need to be looked at. And perhaps some slight modifications of the footprint may allow those specimen trees to be saved or at least minimize the damage to the trees. But currently they're not even um, inventory, so we don't even know they're there. That's exactly what I was thinking of. My concern is that that, that gets into, that, that, that makes trees more important in development and makes certain lots unusual, possibly because of where trees are after they were You know, we're often concerned about the trend of the freight bar, if you will. But I'm just curious who monitors like businesses, their shrubs when they start pulling the roads? You can't see the road. Who monitors that? Well, a lot of that comes in through me, the Arbor Division, and we'll monitor that. And if it's uh, somewhere where we need to make contact with the business owners, a lot of times we can either turn that over to the marshals or just reach out to the local business owners to you know, be talking about for site visibility issues and things like that. Yeah, I mean, to, to me, that makes sense. That's a lot more important that I can see as sort of part of the hippie rather than if I throw my crate motor back too far. That just makes sense. One of the things to keep in mind is we are a true city USA. We have been for 29 years, we're going on 30, and that's something that the city of Idosta takes pride in. And one of the biggest things and one of our main concerns for doing this is the preservation of our urban forest. Uh, there's many different reasons for it to have an urban forest, to have a healthy urban forest. And we can get into all those, but I think for as far as time goes, you know, that's our main concern with the preservation of our urban forest and being able to preserve what we do have. And part of the issue is not that you cannot trim a tree, but to trim it in a proper way. And that's where they give a lot of the education and outreach to folks. But if there's ways to do it, trimming for visibility purposes, you know, all those things are allowed. It's just it's the right way, the wrong way. Any other questions? I suppose you're in favor of this, so at this point, I'll see if anybody's in opposition of this. I think I had a couple more people in the audience who were. Oh, anybody here? Anyone here favor this request? We'll, we'll have one more. We've got a last of our time. That's your name again, please, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is Kevin Conrad. Commissioners, and I'm at One Ridgeview Circle here in Valdosta, Georgia. I serve as chairman of the Valdosta Tree Commission since, um, well, for a long time, actually. I've been on the commission since 2007. I'm a strong, strong community advocate for both the city of Valdosta and for Lowndes County. You have in front of you a very workable um, amendment to the, land, the LDR, the Landscape Ordinance. I have been told by developers, both locally and from, not locally, or, or from Atlanta specifically, that our ordinance is very workable in relation to other municipalities, perhaps our size and even larger. We are not, or our intention is representing uh, the city of Valdosta is not to limit growth, not to add red tape, not to be cumbersome or burdensome. We want development in the city of Valdosta and Lyons County 
We want to grow our community, but we also want to be mindful of the natural beauty that we have and be mindful that we can think through projects and perhaps save some specimen or canopy trees that will further enhance the beauty of the business that's being built, remodeled, or relocated. A great example, both pro and con perhaps, is if you'll envision with me the intersection of North Valoster Road and Country Club. You have Southwest Georgia Bank, excuse me, on this side if I'm going west, and you have Southeastern Federal Credit Union on the other side. Both amazingly respectable institutions. Please hear me. One was built with a, so the credit union was built first and was not, quite frankly, um, managed properly from the, the ordinance perspective. Lost a, a ton of trees on that property. The Valdosta Tree Commission and the City Arborist got involved with Southwest Georgia Bank when they began building there or the site plan for their new bank. If you can, if you visualize those two properties, you can see that we were able, and I'll take the credit for this for the City of Valdosta and the Tree Commission, we were able to have a conversation with the developer and the builder. He understood what we were trying to do, and we subsequently were able to place the building with the approval of the bank where it is now, saving the buffer of trees both in the front and on the perimeter of the building, and it's a beautiful specimen of what we're trying to um, explain here today. So I encourage you to help us go forward with our community and with our county and approve these minor recommendations that you have in front of you so that we can go and grow and be a better community for it. Questions? Okay. Yeah. How are specimens? I'll, define, I'll refer that to my arborist. Um, if you look in the chapter, in chapter three twenty eight twenty one, it uh, pretty much describes what a what. Page 14. What criteria does it need to be met to be a specimen tree? Uh, most species, it's just a matter of size. Uh, depending on location, if it's within the same roadway, or it can be considered a canopy tree as well. If it's close enough to the same roadway, it will benefit the city and the surrounding community to have that tree in the building. Is there a size? Size, yes, sir. If you look in there, it's uh, 16 inches for most of them. All canopy trees have to be 16 inches DBH or larger. Long leaf or spruce browns have to be 10, inch, 10 inches DBH or larger. Wild oaks and magnolias have to be 14 inches or larger. Small species, i.e., prairie myrtles, uh, things like that, have to be 6 inches or larger. So to, to Commissioner Paulson, to early, further clarify the question and the answer, very simply is that from the city's perspective and the Valdosta Tree Commission's perspective, we try to work with the builder or the developer, understanding that larger sized trees um, are absolutely most important. But we will lose some from time to time. Uh, we don't want to hinder that. But we want to just have everyone stop and think about what we're doing and can we do it better to further not only the business but the community as well. So we're trying to protect our larger trees and part of the urban canopy that Mr. Jenkins just referred to um, and promote the beauty of our town. Um, Dean Polin wrote an article in the Valhalla Daily Times a number of years ago about we're a city of trees. We've been uh, uh, looking out from the, you know, the new uh, courthouse, Lowndes County Courthouse building. On the top floor, you look over the city and the county and you just see a canopy of trees. Um, understanding, and I'll finish here, that we're not saving everything, and that's not our point. Our point is to help builders and developers um, place their business or their construction appropriately, and if we can save some trees in the process, then we're the better for it. Yeah, you mentioned builders and developers. I 
I think that's great. I'm, I'm not opposed to that whatsoever. My concern is the mom and pop businesses. Mm -hmm. but what we're talking about here is police powers, $250 fines first time. And you mentioned community outreach. I see you community outreaching for the big people, which the $250 wouldn't mean that much to them, developers and builders, but I'm thinking about the mom and pops, the existing businesses, the people that are going to get hit with these fines, because they're the ones that's going to be most likely to say, I didn't know. And, you know, come up with something <laughs> to right. let these people know, and, and, and I, I, I would be happy. No, and that's a valid point, too, sure. is, and very simply, is we're not we're not looking to acquire fee income or fine income, if you will. Um, it's all about communication, and part of the charge that Mr. Jenkins has Jenkins has here is to communicate with the mom and pop developments, especially if they're submitting a site plan. Then that will come into play. We are trying to address initially through the application process for a business license or whatever. Uh, better communication. Valid point. I did. And as far as the fines and penalties go, right now under the LDR, we do have the right for a $500 fine. Not for person offense. For any offense. Um, this just gives us the power to say, all right, for your first offense, we can go to a $250 fine. I've taken several cases to court here in the municipal court myself, and I can tell you, under the first offense, Nobody gets fined. You replace the trees, and that's as far as it goes. You fix what you damaged, and we're done. Um, that's just the way it works. And it's never been a fine issue for a first offense on anybody I think it works. Well, the preferred purpose would be not to have the tree damaged in the first place. It would be. And you do this by communicating. You say you're going to do it, and I hope you do it. Like I said. You know, we'll the the community outreach and education, I think, is. First and foremost, that's something that we've got. We don't want to go to court. That's our last thing. That's, that's the last thing we want to do, yeah. Very much so. Very well. We have probably exhausted our time for in favor of this. So uh, if there's anyone here in opposition of this request, please come forward this time. Anyone in opposition of this request, please come forward this time. There being none, if there's any more discussion between the commissioners, we will have that at this time. If there be no discussion, I would have it open for a motion on this item. I'd almost like to put a condition on there, but I don't want to hold that. Go ahead. Chair. I'd like to make a motion that uh, we recommend to uh, this uh, text amendment request to the city of Alaska uh, find it consistent with a copy of the plan recommended approval. We have a motion from Commissioner Wells. Do we have a second? A second motion. We have a second. Commissioner Ball, all in favor? Raise your hand, signify. All in opposition of this request, 6 2 in favor of Carmel. Man, I believe we're going to finish you up real quick here. Yes, sir. 